internet can fire information around the world at the touch of a button. To find out how, we've come to the historic port of Calais in France. From the outside, she looks like any other cargo vessel. But then you notice the curious cargo she's taking on board. What appears to be a thick garden hose is snaking its way onto the loading bay at the stern. Strange enough, but stranger still, the hose seems to go on and on and on. It's an incredibly compact, high-tech, underwater cable designed to carry an extraordinary volume of digital data. How long is it? It's a staggering 4,000 kilometers long. The digital revolution has transformed the world thanks to mile upon mile of undersea cable. It carries around 80% of all phone, fax, and data transmissions. Without cable, the modern world would grind to a halt. Most of the world's undersea cable begins like here, in a plant run by the Anglo-French cable venture Alcatel. Manufacturing the cable is an intricate and labor-intensive business. The men on this shop floor have the delicacy of touch and eye for detail of surgeons. incredibly thin, just the width of a human hair. It's designed to carry pulses of light from a laser. But even optic fiber can only carry a limited amount of digital data. So Alcatel weaves the fibers together into an enormous piece of glass rope. The fiber rope is fragile yet the conditions it will face are extremely hostile. So that means wrapping it in a protective coating. And here it is. It looks like ribbon, but it's made of high-grade steel. The steel threads its way through a complex array of pulleys some 15 meters long. It's an endless switchback designed to keep the ribbon perfectly aligned. As the steel and fiber bundle comes together, something remarkable happens. Miniature rollers squeeze the steel around the fiber to create the tube. A tiny weld seals the join, and the undersea cable is born. After wrapping in a waterproof plastic covering, the cable will be ready for laying. Back on board, the cable is coming on at a rate of 100 meters per minute. The operation needs constant monitoring. The cable is stored here below deck. Two giant tanks, seven meters deep and 19 meters across, hold 2,000 kilometers of cable apiece. How the cable is stored is vital to the operation. Specialist crews carefully coil the cable into place. Their aim, to make maximum use of the available space and keep the fiber optic in one piece. The men work in shifts, each taking a turn to act as ringmaster, while the rest prod and push the cable tight with wedges. How do they 
do it. On board, there's more excitement. The crew is loading aboard a series of torpedo-like objects. They're called repeaters, and they are a vital component of the internet cable beneath the sea. Even with an electrical charge running through it, transatlantic internet cable cannot maintain the laser light signal at constant strength over such a huge distance. So, along every 50 kilometers of cable, a repeater is spliced in to provide a boost. The loading operation may appear relaxed, but it isn't. The crewmaster controls it with all the authority and subtlety of an orchestra conductor. Her team watches her intently. No words are spoken. It's like a telepathic transfer of information. They just basically sign language or uh, a nod of the head and wave of the hand here and there. Each repeater weighs half a ton. Damage it and the cost of repair and time delay is enormous. Loading the amplifiers and cable is painstaking work. But deploying it under the sea is even more so. How I describe my job to people at home, the analogy I use is if you're in a plane flying over the Alps, say it's 6,000 meters above them, and we have this string, this cable out the back of the plane, and we have to fill the contours of the Alps as we progress across the sea, you know, say from the UK to America. To lay the cable with such awesome precision needs some very special technology. The ship's bridge looks a bit like the Starship Enterprise. It's quiet enough now, but when this vessel pulls out to sea, the pressure on the crew is relentless. The ship is custom-built and designed to travel at a speed of just half a mile an hour, resisting tide and wind to stay on course using so-called dynamic positioning propellers mounted around the hull. Soon the ship will slip anchor and head off on its epic voyage, inching its way across the surface of the sea. It's strange to think that so much effort on such a grand scale is devoted to something the size of a human hair. But optic fiber allows the modern world to talk to itself. Global communication today hangs by a thread, literally. Five ordinary objects. Five 